I'm Mr. West, and today we are breaking down teaching scenes in movies and rating the teaching performance and the scenes realism. Teaching is a combination of art and science, mixing the aspects of performance and speech with that of psychology and human development. It really does take years to master, and even then we can still learn more, because as teachers, it is about becoming lifelong students ourselves. I've only taught high school math for eight years, but I've learned a lot through my master's studies, from observing my fellow teachers, and of course from my students, which have all contributed to the way in which I teach today. First, we're gonna look at Mr. Escalante in Stand and Deliver. You burros have math in your blood. Hey, Questionable use of burros. I call that rolling with the punches there. He he hears the kiwasabi and he just adopts that nickname for himself and it becomes like of a term of endearment with his students. Every time you see this, you multiply. A negative times a negative equals a positive. A negative times a negative equals a positive. Say it. A negative times a negative equals a positive. Say it. A negative times He's got good a rhythm a in terms of his teaching Again. flow. A negative times a negative He's using positive. proximity as he goes around the, work, the room. I can't hear you. A negative times a negative equals a positive. Real reluctant a students at times, but they're still participating. Whole room's doing it now. Why? All right, pause it. You call that chanting, a teaching technique that often is used in elementary school where you can either sing or say like some sort of rhyme over and over again. And the point is the more times you say it and you say it with everybody, the more likely you're gonna be learning this and understanding it for yourself. If you go back and rewind too, you'll notice that he says it seven times. He makes the students say it seven times exactly. And there's some scientific research to back that up, that seven is this like magic number that will help your brain remember it later if you write that something down seven times or if you repeat it seven times like he's doing here. And you, you can see him moving around the room too, which I really like. So overall, I would give Mr. Escalante an A minus. He does call his students burros, which isn't exactly a great PC thing to say, but he's a great teacher in terms of how he engages his students. And then in terms of realism, I would probably give this a two or three fakes out of five. It's hard to get students, especially high school students, to use that chanting method. But if he's already established that rapport with the students in that cultural environment, it should be pretty easy for a legendary teacher like him. So the next teacher we're looking at is Mr. White from Breaking Bad. Let's take a look. Forgot my remote. <laughs> take a look at that. Chemistry. It is the study of what? Anyone? All right, pause it right there. This is an intro to chemistry class, I'm assuming. I've never actually seen Breaking Bad, but knew that this particular character was also a teacher. He starts off with a vague question, which is not a really good way to engage the audience, unless you're willing to take a variety of answers. Let's see how the students do. Ben. Chemicals. Chemicals. No. Pause. So he shoots down Ben's answer. If you're asking for just like the students' opinions and, and maybe even have them break up into groups and talk about it and then share out their answer, that way there's a little bit less personal risk involved because you want the students to take risk and, and participate. But if they get shot down like that, they're not gonna be willing to participate in the, in the future. So maybe for him, he just needs to work on his bedside manner. Let's keep watching. Well, technically, chemistry is the study of matter but I prefer to see it as the study of change. Now just, just think about this. Electrons, they. So I'm a math teacher and I always was jealous of science teachers because they can do these great demonstrations. They change their bonds. Huh? Elements, they combine and change into compounds. You can see that he's noticing the, the students in the back. That's all of life, right? I mean, it's just, it's the constant, it's the cycle, it's solution. Let's pause right here. One thing you can get from Mr. White is he's knowledgeable. He has a lot of background information, background knowledge on the subject. And that happens to be the case for a lot of teachers. They're experts in their field and they decide to go into teaching or they were just experts at teaching whatever subject. They know a lot about their subject. And I think a lot of teachers don't get enough credit for how much of an expert they are at what they teach. Let's keep watching. Growth, 
then decay, then transformation. <laughs> He's clearly annoyed at the noise in the it back of the room. Fascinating, <laughs> really. <laughs> He does not have a game face, that's for sure. Chad, is there something wrong with your table? A great question. Okay. I that was a good way to defuse the situation. But this kid's clearly making the most out of this opportunity. <clears throat> Students love attention. They'll get attention any way they can. I Pause. Class. So I think that's the end of the clip, but you can see how, how he just went from this passionate teacher that just really wants to uh, inform his students of chemistry to completely deflated. That happens a lot. That's pretty accurate. But that's one of the challenges of teaching is the, we have these experts and the other component of teaching is the performance. Every day is a performance. You have to have a game face. You have to connect with your students. It's a, a flow. You can feel the energy and you have to deal with these incoming distractions and uh, students reacting in different ways. <laughs> And in this case, he just didn't have the energy to get through this distraction. Overall, I would probably give Mr. White a B or B minus just because he could engage the students a little bit more at the beginning. And then also in terms of realism, I would give this zero fakes out of five. This is extremely realistic as to what can happen in the classroom. All right, next up, we're going to take a look at Mr. Schneebly, but he's actually being impersonated by Mr. Finn in School of Rock. We were learning in sing song. Huh. What are your methods? Very mm -hmm. technical name. Yeah. I find that it's really helpful when you're teaching the subjects that are the boring subjects. Huh. Not yet. Well, you don't mind if I just sit in on your class this afternoon, do you? No, no. Come on back this afternoon. Pause. <laughs> So a couple of things. One, I, I love how he calls it the boring subjects, and then he's teaching math next. So I take personal offense that he's calling math a boring subject. And then he wants the teacher to come back later in the afternoon, which it... It is the afternoon, I meant now. He has no concept of what time it is. So please, just continue with your method. Yeah. Okay. So he is right, though, in, in saying that music is a good way to teach students. Students often retain information better if it's in a song, which is why a lot of teachers try to come up with songs or, or rhymes or poems to remember certain pieces Math of information. Math is a wonderful thing. Math is a really cool thing. So get off your ass, let's do some math. Math, 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 math. Uh, pause. I love how he says, get off your ass, by the way. Real subtle. Three minus four is... Negative one. That's right. And six times a billion is... Six billion? Nailed it. And 54 is a 45 more than what is the answer, Marta? Nine. No, it's eight. No, it's nine. All right, let's pause it there. He's using method called cold calling here, but he's doing a really good job because he's integrating the music and he's already established this classroom culture. Cold calls can be effective, but for many students, they get really nervous and they have anxiety with cold calling. So you have to be very careful how you use it and you really have to establish that relationship with students. But clearly this student has a good relationship with him because not only does she respond, she feels comfortable to correct him and she sings it back. So she's participating in uh, the music even more. A lot of good things here, even though he's faking being a teacher, I, I would also argue that it's very difficult to be Jack Black. So I would say he's a B plus in this scene, but I would give it four out of five fakes in terms of realism. Okay, next up, we're gonna look at Miss Norbury in Mean Girls. Failing? You know what's weird about your quizzes, Katie, is that all the work is right and just the answers are wrong. Let's pause. Real quick, math teachers are big on work, uh, especially with innovations online, uh, MathWay, PhotoMath. You gotta show the work to get the credit. Really? Really? Katie, I know that having a boyfriend may seem like the most important thing in the world right now, but you don't have to dumb yourself down to get guys to like you. 
How would you know? I know. How would I know, right? I'm divorced. I'm broke from getting divorced. The only guy that ever calls my house is Randy from Chase Visa. And you know why? Because I'm a pusher. I push people. I pushed my husband into law school. That was a bust. I pushed myself into working three jobs. And now, Let's I'm gonna pause. push you. A lot of teachers have to work multiple jobs because of the pay. So even though they're experts and they know their stuff and they make connections with their students and they put in a lot of effort outside of school, they're forced to work multiple jobs, credit card bills, uh, student loans, but I'm, I'm glad this film highlighted this. Let's keep watching. Because I know you're smarter than this. Thanks, Miss Norbury. And if there's anything I can do for extra credit, please let me know. Oh, I will. Pause. So extra credit, um, I like putting extra credit questions, but extra credit assignments, I would prefer the students actually do the work that was assigned because that's what's gonna happen in real life. But overall, I wanna talk about Miss Norbury. She does a great job addressing the student issue one-on-one. -on -one. Students like, don't like to be picked out in the middle of a class, so it's good to do that on the side when other students aren't around, so really good job by Miss Norbury. And she just seems like she's trying to relate to the student, uh, talk about her own weaknesses. I think she gets a little too personal, but you know, this is Hollywood, so they're just trying to hyperbolize it a little bit. But overall, I would say she's a really good teacher, like an A or an A minus. In terms of realism, I would give it maybe one fake out of five, if that. It's, it's a pretty realistic situation that teachers would have this conversation. Next up, we are going to look at Miss Umbridge from Harry Potter. I think this is the Order of the Phoenix. <laughs> Harry Potter, number one, would be a sweet school to work at. With all the magic going on. Pause. Good morning, John. How awesome would it be to be able to use magic in class? I can think of a million uses. Again, fantasy world. Ordinary wizarding level examinations. O W L. Let's pause right there. For some reason, education in the, in the field of education loves using acronyms galore, so it's kind of funny that it's also in Harry Potter. Let's keep More watching. commonly known as owls. Study hard. Pause. So I wanted to comment on something real quick. Her voice inflection, how you use your voice is super important as a teacher. Your intonation is gonna indicate a change in directive, a change in activity, a change in what you're asking of them and versus disciplinary versus encouragement. And you can tell she's using this high pitch voice to kind of make her seem less intimidating for the students because I think this is their first day of class. Let's keep watching. Will be rewarded. Fail to do so and the consequences may be severe. Again, this is where it'd be useful to be a uh, magical teacher. Your previous this subject has been disturbingly uneven. But you'll be pleased to know, from now on, you will be following a carefully structured... Old, worn books. Approved Very books common. ...defensive magic. Yes. There's nothing in here about using defensive spells. Using spells? <laughs> well, I can't imagine why you would need to use spells in my classroom. We're not going to use magic. You will be learning about defensive spells in a secure, risk-free way. What use is that? If we're going to be attacked, it won't be risk-free. Pause. She says risk-free way. I, I think there's like a misconception with risk. We need to encourage our students to take risk. The consequences for the risk need to be lessened, but there should be risk and failure in the classroom. If you don't have risk and failure, then they're not gonna be learning. And then he followed up saying the real world is not risk-free. Again, school is preparing students for the real world. No matter what you're learning, hopefully they're gonna transition to an adult. So that's what education is all about. So let's keep watching. Students will raise their hands when they speak in my class. Fair point. It is the view of the ministry that a theoretical knowledge will be sufficient to get you through your examinations, which after all is what school is all about. So let's pause. The last thing I want to talk about with Miss Umbridge is the importance of OWLs and how the theory is good and about the test is the most important thing. And that's a real kind of disturbing trend is teaching to the test and trying to get students prepared for the test versus the actual content and, and knowledge that they'll need to be intrigued in the subject. I'm glad that we have some commentary on that, some social commentary from, from Harry Potter along those lines. Miss Umbridge, I would give her a low grade. I'd give her maybe a D. She's a pretty kind of marginal teacher. In terms of realism though, I would give this only one out of five fakes. It's very 
often that you'll see teaching to the test, trying to cater to the ACT and such. So not too unrealistic besides the magic, of course. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of five famous cinematic teachers at work. Remember that they don't have to make it on screen to become legendary. More likely than not, you have been taught by an expert teacher, so don't forget to show them some appreciation for all that they have done and for all that they do every single day. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time right here on West Explains Best.